My name is Fred Paul Zena from Worthington, Minnesota, and I've got my 1956 Studebaker Powerhawk here. I found this car a couple of years ago at the auction in Deadwood, South Dakota, and my wife and I looked at it, and uh, we decided that's what we wanted. I've always uh, liked the looks of the Studebakers, and uh, took me this long to get one. So we really like it, and uh, we thought we'd come to the car show here in Custer this year. It's quite a drive, but we enjoy it, and we're having a great time. Well, I'm Wayne Andrews. I am from Custer here uh, for 16 years, up from Texas. And uh, we just recently purchased this car. We've only had it about a month now, but we've really enjoyed driving it around the Black Hills and, and a very stable convertible. It's an uh, uh, Avante designed by Studebaker, but built later by some dealers that bought the Avante uh, rights to the car. So Studebaker went out of business in 1963. And uh, so we've just recently purchased it and just love the car. Chuck Dunkel, I'm from Los Animas, Colorado, and I restored a 1959 Lark. It's a four-door, usually four-door car. I call it the Rodney Dangerfield of cars because usually you don't see many four-door cars at, uh, at uh, car shows because the four-doors have been cabbaged off for parts to, com to uh, uh, restore convertibles or uh, uh, two-door sedans or two-door hardtops or whatever else. But this is, uh, like I said, the Rodney Dangerfield. It's a uh, been upgraded to uh, uh, to different things. I've upgraded the electrical system and, and the brakes to, for today's society. And that uh, it's painted what we call Hawaiian green. Another question is where a lot of people ask, "Where did you find this?" And I found this in a pawn shop in, behind the Rainbow Bread dealer in Pueblo, Colorado. In other words, I think this is a Pueblo car. A car. It was a sold by Petrie Motors in Pueblo, Colorado, and I lived in Los Animas, which is down the road, or down the Arkansas River from uh, Pueblo, 80 miles. But I restored it all. It's, uh, we tried to bring it back to original uh, interior, the rest of it all original, but just did the upgrading on the car. People call it the cute car because the uh, car would come from factory just a single color. Well, dealers would add the white roof or change the roof of it so it would catch the buyer's eye so in that part but I've added the roof rack because uh, most cars today have roof racks on them and also since I'm up here I added a pair of skis I need to find a surfboard to put on top it looked like a nice uh, party car I guess it would be so but the we tried to restore like the interior is all restored I'll open the door here and we were able to bring back the original interior in the inside it runs real good it's got the little uh, 170 cubic inch uh, Studebaker Champ engine with a three speed with an overdrive on it. But it does go down the road, get about 22 miles a gallon somewhere in any of those. Hi, my name is Butch Buchanan of Fargo, North Dakota. This is my wife's 1956 Studebaker President. Um, it's all original except for it's had one repaint. It's the original interior motor. It's got the 289 four barrel automatic. Um, we drive it and enjoy it. Hi, I'm Scott Young. I'm originally from Fargo, North Dakota, but I have uh, moved to Custer and I'm a full-time Custer resident. And uh, I've been loving Studebakers all my life and I built this 1953 Studebaker. It's a Commander and uh, it was a rust bucket, but I created a nice car out of it. And we're here in Custer to enjoy the great day and all these other Studebakers. 
we kind of call ourselves orphan cars and uh, people like that it's a little bit different so uh, it's been a fun project and uh, having a nice time here. The engine in this car, I, uh, I had a, such a bad car to begin with, it was rusty and the engine was shot, so I found a wrecked car with a 3800 V6 engine, and uh, that V6 fit in there and it created a really, really nice car, air conditioning, cruise control, power steering and brakes, so it, uh, it makes for a fun driver, and it, it gets a lot of attention, it's a lot of fun. Robert Walby from Brooklyn, Michigan. Uh, this is 27 Studebaker Roadster. It was an early postal car. Uh, it's one of four known to exist today. Uh, I've owned the car for about seven years. Went through a 14 year restoration. Unfortunately, the fellow that restored it passed away and I bought it from his estate. It has a standard six. In 27, they offered three engines, a light six, a standard six, and a big six. And this has the standard six engine in it. We've uh, had it to three national Studebaker shows, and it's done very well, point-wise. We just thought we'd come out to the Black Hills and see what it was like out here. And the show was going, so it was a um, fun trip. My name is Paul Heiner and I'm from Custer, South Dakota. And uh, it's a 1960 Champ. I bought it at Pioneer Auto Museum a long time ago, and the only thing I've ever done to that pickup is put a battery in it. It's still the tires the day I bought it and everything else, and it runs good, and uh, it's just good old Studebaker pickup. Six-cylinder motor, and I also bought this 1956 Flight Hawk. The Flight Hawk is the first Hawk made, and then in the middle of the year, they built the V8, the Power Hawk, and that there is a six cylinder, and according to the records, there's 13 of them left that are running. And uh, just like that, the only thing I ever did to that car is put a battery in it. It's still their tires, and day I bought it from Pioneer Museum on an auction. So, that's the way it is. They're just nicely, they run beautiful, just perfect. I'm Mel Bacon uh, from Brighton, Colorado. This is my dog Kaiser, also named it for a classic car. And this is my 1964 Studebaker Gran Turismo Hawk. Uh, the, the Gran Turismo Hawk was the last year they built Hawks. Built it from 56, there's actually one here today, okay, uh, through 64. They made 1,500 of these uh, total. They were all built in 1963 because they shut the factory down and moved to Canada. And they did not take this model with them. So the result was that they were all just 1,500 of them. This one is kind of unique, it has a vinyl top, only year they put vinyl tops on the Hawk. Okay, they made 300 of them with a vinyl top. And so they came in white or black, most people didn't put them on the car because it cost $65 extra. Okay, so it's got a uh, Studebaker 289 V8 in it. Gets up and runs really nice. Uh, we drove it up from, uh, from Brighton, Colorado. And we picked him up at a, at a car show. Okay, my wife went and found him and took him back to the car clubs and what to name him. And, and they said, well, you drove a Kaiser, his name is Kaiser. So he's been Kaiser ever since. So, so he's a car show dog.
Hi, my name is Frank Van Dorn, and we're here today at Custer, South Dakota for the Studebaker Car Show. We came in the other day from Omaha, Nebraska, and we've been here several times. We're here with our 62 GT Hawk, as they call them, which we've owned since 1991, and I restored it in the mid-90s. And so it's been basically been done for about 25 years. It's equipped with dual exhaust, standard equipment, four-speed transmission on this model, velvet black paint, 289 engine, 225 horsepower. Uh, it drives real nice. It now shows 154,000 miles on the odometer. My name is Tom Cantrell. I'm the president of the uh, Dakota chapter of the Studebaker Club here. We're out here today in Custer showing our cars and trucks. Behind me here we have my car or my truck. It's a 1948 uh, M-Series pickup. It's been highly modified. It's a uh, street rod. Originally it was a flathead six, would have been a small six as we called them. Um, now it has a Chevy Nova front end with a 350 engine, 350 tranny, power steering, power brakes. Um, obviously the roof's been chopped, convertible top, just a really fun truck to drive. I found this truck, believe it or not, on eBay, and the guy was trying to sell it. I contacted him, uh, made him an offer, he wouldn't take my offer, said it was too low, he'd hold out and get more, and I said, okay, why, well, whatever. So about three months later, he called me up and he said, you still interested in my truck? And I said, yeah, I am. So I said, but I'm not driving all the way to Illinois to get it. You missed your chance because I had an opportunity to go to, uh, I was going to South Bend, Indiana to get a trailer, an enclosed car trailer, and I could have picked it up on the way and brought it back. So he decided he'd meet me halfway. So we drove down to Des Moines, met, made the deal, brought the truck back. So I've had it about eight years now. Uh, I've done some upgrading. We put a new top on, new tonneau, new seats, new carpet, door panels, did some mechanical work, rebuilt the transmission. Um, modified. I raised it up just a little bit. It was so low to the ground that you couldn't go over any dips without it bottoming out. And that's no fun. Uh, you got to be able to drive it. You know, I brought it back up about two and a half inches. So now I just have to kind of slow down before I go over a dip. It does not have a heater because it was done in Kentucky in about 1998 or 99. So a heater wasn't important to them. So it has no heat, no AC. So I don't drive it in the wintertime, obviously, although I have driven it uh, like back in February, I took it to the Count's Car Show. It was a nice day. I drove it out there instead of trailering it. But if it would have been 15 degrees, I would have trailered it, you know. Because it's not much fun to drive in the cold. But, uh, but it's a big hit with the, with the younger people. And one of the things that uh, nationwide when it comes to Studebakers is the people that remember the cars are we're older. We're not young. And so unless we get some younger people involved with Studebakers, this could be a dying, a dying thing. I mean, people always buy these old cars, but whether or not they'll have the, the connection to them or the family history or something like that, that's gonna go away. So we gotta get young people involved, and that's why I like bringing this truck out to these shows, because I let all the kids get in there and get their pictures taken, and, and they just get a big kick out of it. And I figure if you can set that hook when they're 10, 11 years old, you got a car guy for life, or a girl, you know? The girls like cars too, so. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun truck. Um, other than that, it's got like 35,000 miles on it, um, which is kind of a lot for a street rod. They, they generally don't get driven that much, but this thing has been all over the place. So.